You're watching CBS News Los Angeles, The Rundown. Hi everyone, I'm Susie Sa. A federal judge has ruled the city of LA does not need to pay a North Hollywood business owner for damages caused by SWAT officers during a raid two years ago. KCAL News reporter Lori Perez is working on that update tonight. Another blow to a North Hollywood business owner. For two years now, he's been trying to get compensated after a SWAT team went looking for a fugitive inside his print shop. It used to be right there. Now, a federal judge has now ruled that the city does not have to pay him. We are talking to Carlos Pena tonight about the fight. His attorneys say they will take all the way to the Supreme Court. Six people are presumed dead after today's devastating bridge crash collapse in Baltimore. A massive cargo ship hit the bridge today after losing power. A search and rescue teams wrapped up for the night because water conditions are too dangerous right now. And tonight we spoke with an expert about the logistics challenges ahead. The most immediate effect on our clients and, and others is that freight's going to have to go somewhere. So it'll discharge in New York, New Jersey, or it'll discharge in uh, Norfolk or the southeast, and it'll still have to get up into that market. Long term, if if someone is committed and has a DC network that's set up in and around Baltimore, they're still going to have to get it into the US. And what that usually means is that they'll probably start booking, uh, you know, you know, one, two, three months in the future to come into LA potentially if that works for their supply chain and then put that on rail or truck and move it east. So yes, uh, there will be a long-term uh, effect that will benefit uh, more than likely LA and Long Beach. But in the near term, you know what, what we're trying to be mindful of right now is salvaging and rescuing as much of the freight that gets discharged uh, all along the East Coast. And be sure to stay with CBS News Los Angeles for continuing coverage on the Baltimore Bridge collapse. A new data shows robberies are up almost 10% in LA compared to last year. Interim LAPD Chief Dominic Chor revealing the new numbers to the police commission today. Choi also revealed violent crimes and homicides are also up. But he says property crime is down nearly 5% from last year and gang related robberies are down more than 25%. Well, turning now to our weather, a live look outside, but things are going to change this weekend. Danny Ruberti has the latest conditions and what's ahead in your next weather forecast. Hi there, Danny. Hey, Susie. Yeah, we are already tracking that storm. You are going to see it out there in the Pacific. This is a slow mover, and it is a big storm that's going to make its way towards the Pacific Northwest, drop down the coast, and it is going to bring us the rain, the wind, and the snow going into our week. And before getting to that, though, things are looking real pretty outside. Here's a live look from Malibu. Uh, you can see uh, out there a little bit hazy in some areas, but we're in the mid 60s getting ready to see that sunrise in the next, excuse me, sunset. We're going to the e evening time sunset in the next eight minutes, so it looks really good. Let's talk about what's next. Things are quiet. We're going to turn chilly again tonight. We'll be waking up to a few clouds in the morning time, afternoon sunshine. Tomorrow's going to be a great day. We're quiet until around Thursday. This is when we're going to start to notice some changes. Winds are going to pick up. We're going to get clouds. And by the time we get to Friday night, this is when the rain starts and we are going to get heavy rain at times this upcoming weekend. So let's talk about the timing and all this because I know it is not the best time, you, you guys. We're talking Easter weekend. Things are going to be soggy Friday night going into Saturday. This is when we are dealing with the steady rain that is heavy at times. Now going into Sunday, the rain is still with us. It's going to be a bit more showery, but we're going to add something else in there. The next big challenge, it's going to be the thunderstorms. We're going to see all the ingredients out there for thunderstorms on Easter Sunday. And if we get these, we're talking the gusty winds, the, the possibility for hail and also brief heavy downpours. So here's a look at that storm. It will be on the move slowly but surely making its way towards the Pacific Northwest. And by the time it gets to Thursday, this is when it starts dropping down. It breaks away from the main jet streak and this is when it becomes that cutoff low where it kind of does its own thing. It's going to kind of hobble its way right down towards Southern California park itself off the coast and this is going to bring the rain Friday, Saturday, again going into our Sunday and then early Monday as well. It will linger. So how much rain are we talking? We're talking about one to three inch. That's the range right now. And a lot of our models are showing just what we expected and what we saw yesterday. So things are lining up one to three inches of rain for LA Ventura County. We're going to see that for Orange County and also the IE. So beaches and valleys, you're going to be in that rain for foothills and mountain communities. We've got the three to six inch 
inches of rain. And so the big concern going into this weekend, it could be the potential for flooding for mudslides and rock slides. So if you live in any of these hillsides that were affected by that storm in February, this is going to be a big concern going into this upcoming weekend. Now, before we get to our next seven days, let's talk about tonight. Another evening or we've got a whole lot of 40s out there, upper 40s all across the Inland Empire. So just like this morning, it's going to be a chilly start. We've got upper 40s in Riverside, mid 40s in Simi Valley with the 70s on tap tomorrow afternoon. Coming up at KCAL News at 8, we're going to break down for you hour by hour when the rain moves in because I know you guys have Easter plans and we're going to try to help you out with that this upcoming weekend. Susie, that sounds good, Danny. Thank you so much. And now to breaking news out of Fullerton where a person reportedly has an explosive. Desmond Shaw live in SkyCal with the details for us now. Desmond. Uh, Susie, it's the 100 block of West Bastardshire here in Fullerton where someone apparently has an explosive either inside or outside of this Wells Fargo uh, right here. A huge response here by the uh, Fullerton SWAT team here. Uh, they had a couple of robots out uh, in, in front of the Wells Fargo. It's very peculiar because there is someone that is curled up in a ball. I'm going to have to stay wide on this one, though, uh, in front of the building right here. They had the little robot as well as a drone come out. They were inspecting to see if anything was explosive and then the uh, robot and the drone just left. Uh, it's unclear if that's the suspect, what condition they're in. We haven't seen them move at all, but there hasn't been any indication of any shots fired by authorities or anything like that. So a very strange situation. The only good news here is that no one else is believed to be in danger as all of the employees were uh, evacuated from that Wells Fargo before the SWAT team uh, gets here. So possibly a standoff type situation with someone claiming to have an explosive uh, near the Wells Fargo here in Fullerton. Live at Sky Caliber Head, I'm Desmond Shaw. Susie, back to you in the studio. All right, Desmond, thank you so much, and please keep us updated. This has been CBS News Los Angeles, The Rundown. I'm Susie Su. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back live on KCAL News at 8 here on CBS News Los Angeles. CBS News Los Angeles, your local news, streaming wherever, whenever.